This is a mahogany secretaire campaign chest by SW Silver and Co. It's um, around 1850 or just after 1850 in date. And it's quite a nice size. The width is a standard 39 inches, which you would expect on a campaign chest of the date. But the height is also 39 inches, and that's just a couple of inches lower than most. A lot of Victorian secretaire chests would have a higher secretaire, and you'd be expected to stand to work at it. This one's quite useful because you can sit at it. So um, for practical, modern use, very good. How do we know that it's by SW Silver? Well, there's a number of design features that we recognise from it, but more importantly than that, SW Silver typically stamped the back plates of their flush handles with their name and address. And you get a few different addresses on it. This one is 67, 66 and 67 Cornhill. And um, they recommended that uh, naval officers, military officers, midshipmen, cadets, and ladies and civilians went to 66 and 67 Cornhill to, uh, to buy their furniture. SW Silver had uh, a number of different locations around the country, but also in London. And they, uh, they described 66 and 67 Cornhill as their cabin passenger warehouse. And that might also give us a clue as to why it's slightly smaller in size. We can also see to the side here, we've got iron carrying handles. This chest was never intended to go into a packing case, but the uh, iron carrying handles made it quite quick and easy to pick up and move. Um, and you could also use them for tying down if necessary. Now on board a ship, that of course, is very useful, very practical. You're not going to use a campaign chest on a ship which has got packing cases. You want everything to be able to move nice and quickly and easily. And also, the slightly smaller size might make it easier to fit into a cabin. So let's have a look at the secretaire. If we pull the drawer out like this, we've got two buttons which we depress like that and the front falls down. So the drawers are faced in satin wood, as is the surround to the writing area, and the writing area, working area, is beige. We've got uh, four pigeonholes and four drawers, um, a bank of two on each side of the pigeonholes. Typically, on most campaign chests, you'd expect to see three drawers here. Not on this one. The drawers are a little bit deeper. They're all plain, whereas on... Uh, this bottom right hand drawer you might expect to see dividers to take inkwells and pen trays uh, we, we don't have anything the whole of the interior um, drawers are plain now as i said before it's uh, it's a very useful height and in fact um, if you're going to use this in a bedroom it would also make quite a useful uh, dressing table and also you've got lots of storage here, so you can put things like your wallet or watches or whatever at the end of the day when you're getting changed. Now you may have noticed that on both sides of the secretary in front of the drawer, you've got a rebate here, you've got a cutout. And originally this would have had a board which just slid down, but during travel it would stop these drawers coming too far forward, keep them in. Unfortunately it's fairly common that these boards get separated from their campaign chests. Occasionally we see them, and we do have another SW Silver campaign chest at the moment and on the website, which does retain its original board. SW Silver were a fascinating company, and there's plenty that you can read about them on our website under makers at campaignfurniture.com if you go and have a look. They were set up by Stephen Winkworth Silver in round about uh, 1838 and probably in Liverpool, although they did have premises in London at that sort of date as well. And they, they offered everything they, uh, that you would need for travelling. Aside from furniture, you could buy china, you could buy clothing, you, you could buy all sorts, whatever you needed to make your journey as an emigrant or as a soldier a little bit easier. And in fact, they really capitalised on the huge wave of 
emigrants that travelled to Australia when gold was discovered in 1851 and also went out to New Zealand looking for a better life. In fact, they boasted that they had a representative in every colony in Australia. They were also uh, the only British company who showed at the New Zealand exhibition of 1865. And in fact, the judges were so impressed with them that they said that their furniture would uh, fit into any luxuriant apartment, but was also light and practical enough that it could quickly fold down as easy as a camp stool. Um, they also diversified. Um, in 1852, they moved their factory north of the river in London to Woolwich Reach and took over around about 15 acres in the end, the, the site of their factory. Um, it, was, it was huge and they employed around about 2,800 people. So much so that the area uh, became known as Silvertown and still is to this day. Um, I said they diversified. You may have heard of Silvertown golf balls and Silver King golf balls. Well, they, um, they extended their use of gutta percha and rubber they insulated cables, they also made sporting equipment, um, golf balls, and uh, this became a very strong additional side to their business. And they went well into the 20th century as a company. But as I said, there's lots and lots of information about them on our website, and they really were quite a fascinating company. So anyway, we've got an annoying beep from one of the lights, which tells me it's probably time to end this little video. Um, this is a nice, to sum up, mahogany secretary campaign chest by S.W. Silver and it's uh, around about 1850 or just after in date.